r slash ask reddit lawyers of reddit what's the worst way you've seen a person screw over someone else in court whether it be criminal civil or divorce proceedings a witness for the plaintiff in a civil suit who was a co-worker of the plaintiff testified very strongly against the company and in favor of the plaintiff i questioned her about bias toward the plaintiff if they knew each other well were friends etc she said no just friendly co-workers work friends at best i pinned her to it when i got a chance to cross examine the plaintiff she had no choice but to burn her witnesses credibility because no only were they very close friends but they had become sisters in law just a few years before no they did not have the same last name or anything but i had done my homework I still don't get why people want to fight small buyers by destroying their credibility, but it happens more than you think. I am being sparse on details here due to confidentiality, but I had a client who was accused of a very nasty sexual offense. He had an alibi, he was at work, where he was the boss. He had an employee who could absolutely vouch for his being there. I talked to the employee, employee confirmed this. It gets closer to the trial, and around the time when I need to send in an alibi notice, which is advance notice to the crown so that they can investigate the alibi and determine whether or not it's true. But, I am being careful, so I call the employee up again. Turns out my client fired him in the interim, and so the employee quite candidly tells me, oh, yeah, he was definitely at work, but that's not what I'll say in court. Duck that guy, he is going down. I did not call him as a witness, or file the alibi notice, still won the trial, but if I hadn't thought to call the guy, or if he'd been less candid, my client would have been ducked hard, sex offender registry, jail time, the works, completely innocent. I had this one moment that is my favorite to share so excuse me if it is floating around reddit already. I was litigating a custody dispute on behalf of the mother in an incredibly conservative jurisdiction. One of the most common ways to get custody was to allege sex or porn addiction because the threshold for it was basically non-existent. For this hearing however, we lucked out with the judge, who I knew from other cases. Opposing counsel tried to gotcha me into settling before the hearing by showing me surprise sexts between mom and her new boyfriend. This is, of course, not law and order and you can't introduce surprise evidence. So we go through with the hearing. I object to the sexts, but say I would allow them to be ready into the record in their entirety. So the uptight very conservative local attorney gets to spend the next 25 minutes or so reading sexts in open court occasionally asking if she could gloss over parts but no. I didn't feel it would be appropriate. I'll never forget hearing her struggle with the word nipple. It's not even a dirty word. But this was like the third hearing we had to amend custody because this guy felt his ex-wife having a boyfriend meant she was a sex addict. They alleged the sexts happened while the kid was in mom's custody, but they based that on the timestamp of the screenshots. The timestamp on the texts was clearly at a time when the kid was not even around and mom was safe to get freaky over the phone. The judge had heard enough of his bullshit and awarded attorney's fees and put in the order, consistent with the vexatious litigant statute, that if dad would continue to be liable for her attorney's fees if he kept pushing this shit. It was the only joy I got from practicing family law. More of a case of screwing himself over, but here goes. This was a case another prosecutor in my office had a few years back. 30 year old defendant was charged with sexual assault of a child after he got his girlfriend's 14 year old sister pregnant. She actually kept the baby so the police just waited and got a paternity test. No surprise. Defendant was the father. Defendant wanted probation. Preceptor refused to offer it. He decided to plead guilty and have a jury trial on punishment. Here in Texas. You can choose to have the jury set punishment. Evidence mostly proceeded as expected. The victim testified to having consensual, aside from not being old enough to consent, sex with the defendant, getting pregnant, etc. Paternity test introduced. Defendant took the stand. His version of events was that he snuck into victim's room at night, covered her mouth, and held her down while he forcibly had sex with her against her will. It seemed like his own lawyer had no idea that's the story he settled on. The jury deliberated about 15 minutes before returning a verdict of 17 years the maximum possible as charged was 20. 
When interviewed by the attorneys afterwards, one of them said they decided on 17 years so the defendant would never forget the age of consent in Texas again. Not someone else, but himself. The guy and his lawyer missed court appearances. Sometimes one of them. Sometimes both. With little or no warning and with suspect excuses. It started getting ridiculous and we kept pointing out holes in his story. Like he said he left for another country without knowing about the appearance. But his lawyer stood in court and said he told him beforehand. Or all of a sudden he was in a former Soviet bloc country for fertility treatments and it would ruin everything if he came back now. Or when he was visiting dying relatives on another continent. Or he was going to the airport when he had to rush to the hospital and showed us an admitting form in another language that we translated. It showed he was there but also that he was discharged. He also tried firing his attorney and saying he needed more time to brief a new attorney who at the next appearance would say he hasn't been able to talk to his client so he needs to adjourn. Or that he hasn't been paid and his client is basically an ass and he needs to be relieved. We kept saying to the judge he was doing it to stall but the judge kept giving him the benefit of the doubt. We even showed him other cases where he skipped appearances and the judge's threat and sanctions. Until finally he didn't show up for an appearance where the judge had specifically told him. I don't care if you're meeting with the poop. I'm ordering you to be here. Boom. His answer was stricken. Default judgment in full was granted to our side. Neither he nor his lawyer showed up for the hearing where the judge determined exactly how much of a judgment we should get. And then had the nerve to file a motion that the judgment was unfair because he didn't get a chance to dispute anything. Sitting waiting for my client and the judge is giving a mass colloquy for an alternative program on a DUI. Basically probation. Question. Has anyone consumed alcohol or taken drugs in the last 24 hours? Obvious answer aside. One dude proudly raises his hand. I smoked some dope last night. He did not get probation. Kind of a self screw but the MPAA entered DVD John's code for breaking DVD copy protection as part of their lawsuit into their evidence which then became public record. The code that breaks DVD copy protection was now available to the entire world, defeating the entire purpose of their lawsuit. A wife filed for a restraining order because she wanted the house during divorce. Husband has good job, like 200k per year, employer finds out about restraining order, husband is fired, he was very specialized employee so only job he can find close to to house, ex-wife, and daughter is 50k, house gets foreclosed, child support at less than $500 per month, wife has to get job as waitress, 4 cars get repossessed. This wasn't my case but followed it closely because it was an acquaintance's divorce proceedings. He and his now ex-wife shared some commercial property that was worth some dough. They were both on the paperwork hard access to the same info. Well some shit hit the fan and the property was in arrears and I think some lien was filed. The husband would try to talk to his then wife about the whole thing and she would blow him off. Not only would she ignore him in the finances, she started cheating on him. Fast forward to divorce. It's contentious and they get down to fighting for the primary residence whose market value on Mkimbert is much less than the commercial building. She demanded the house and the husband effectively offered to give her the commercial building if he could keep the residence. She never paid attention to how bad off the commercial building was and for some strange reason her lawyer didn't do any due diligence so they took the deal. I don't know if the asset allocation included any saving conditions or caveats for the ex-wife. But I did like to see that her own disinterest may have led to bargaining for an underwater property instead of a paid off house. I'm a paralegal. The best situations are when we get a sovereign citizen. Someone in the USA who thinks that the US laws do not apply to them for a vast variety of reasons. Hire us but won't let us do anything on their case. We've had to actually fire a bunch of clients because they have gone against our rules like. Don't send a letter to the judge. Don't write your own motions. Don't announce that you're not Mark Smith because Mark Smith has capital letters and you were born with lowercase letters, etc. Honestly, a whole thread on these people wouldn't be enough. I have been in dispute with British Gas for around 10 years. Every now and again they take me to court. Every time I win and we go away for another few years. The last time I lawyered up. It's in a magistrate's even though it's a civil matter. My solicitor waited for the British gas guy to swear his oath to tell the truth the whole truth etc. Then asked him what he knew of the previous court cases. 
When the guy said he didn't know anything about them my solicitor ripped into him saying he'd just claimed to tell the whole truth so clearly nothing he says can be trusted. It went on for a few minutes. It was kind of brutal. The magistrates agreed and we walked away with £600 in costs. It was a joy to watch this bloke who was all. We're coming to make entry to your house and the police will help before we went in be told to sit down and not say anything else unless he was asked a question. To defend off some of the questions. It's to do with a disconnected meter at my house. For electric to a closed shop. I have written to the CEO. I've had my MP involved and been to court four times. British gas don't change. Don't listen so I've given up. I'll just go to court every now and again and claim my 600 pounds. Edit. I just remembered. They had to transfer the money electronically as we were going to send the bailiffs and as they took 27 days to pay. TBH I was a little disappointed when they paid up. Not a lawyer. But my dad is a physician and is sometimes called as a professional witness in cases of malpractice. In one memorable case, a family was suing a doctor for something fairly frivolous. And my dad was a witness for the defense. The lawyer representing the family was cross-examining my dad. And brought up a chapter in a medical textbook and asked my dad to read a highlighted paragraph. He does. And the lawyer says something to the effect of, So, what you just read means, blah blah medical thing. My dad confidently replied, No, it does not mean that, lawyer. No but if you reads is, the author clearly states, blah blah medical thing. Dad, no, really, that's not what the author means. Lawyer, how do you know that's not what the author meant? Dad, well, because I wrote it. Judge basically fassa palm while the lawyer mimicked a goldfish and stared at the author name on the chapter. Basically the best moment of my dad's professional life. Yes, ruling was in the defendant's favor. Not a lawyer but when my Phil and Mill got divorced, she wanted to file jointly for the previous year because they were still married. They would have gotten a decent refund. He insisted on filing separately, despite the fact that he would owe 4k, because he wanted her to also owe the IRS. He did it to frost her ass. Had a criminal jury trial for misdemeanor criminal mischief over 4 years ago. State filed charges and kept amending the information to the point where they left the actual victim out of the trial and proceeded with the two eyewitnesses. Well, one of the witnesses was my client's ex and the other witness was the ex's new GF. They claimed my client vandalized the actual victim's car. Client denied everything. Well, apparently, the state and both witnesses had no idea that the ex had an outstanding warrant for not paying child support to my client which created a motive for him to lie. Asked him if he was aware that he had a warrant out for his arrest on the stand. He didn't know. The judge excused the jurors. The bailiffs arrested the ex on the stand. State rested. Judge granted our motion for judgment of acquittal because we had good case law for the victim not being there. Client walked away free and the ex went to jail. Was involved in a custody case where a wife cheated on her husband and had a child as a result. She let husband believe the child was his until she was about 5 years old and they were divorcing. To stop him from getting custody, she convinced the biological father to try to get custody thinking that if he won she would wind up with the child. Became a huge three way fight. Multiple sets of grandparents involved. Attorney's fees skyrocketed because the case would have been pretty quick otherwise. She couldn't pay her attorney. Tried to get the bio dad too. Got even messier. Etc. Basically there still isn't an agreement all parties will follow. They are in and out of court every year or so. She screwed herself. That poor kid. There's a lawyer in my town who has a reputation for being a real dong. He left a very successful firm to go off on his own. He and the firm negotiated which clients he would take, and how eventual fees from those clients would be divided. All seemed fine and dandy. As soon as he is out the door, he sues his old firm saying the deal is unenforceable and that he should 100% of the fees from the clients who came with him. He lost, and appealed. Lost again and appealed to the state supreme court where they shut his ass down and, in extremely diplomatic language, pretty much called him a dong. One time, I saw an indigent defendant who was in custody tell the judge his public defender wasn't working hard enough and he wanted the judge to appoint different counsel. 
the judge asked him what specifically was the problem and he said I don't want a female lawyer. I need a man who can take charge and fight for me or something very similar to that. The judge, also female, said that's not how it works. Then he starting yelling and getting into specifics about his public defender. Just mainly I don't like her. She won't visit me, etc. The judge is annoyed and looks at him and is like fine. I'll appoint another attorney for you. But because you are not satisfied with your attorney and I need time to appoint you new counsel I am not going to hear any other issues today and will reset your case. A few days later the judge sends defendant notice of his new appointed attorney. Who happens to also be female. And notice of the case reset for 6 weeks. The case was originally set for a bond hearing and Vidar and his PD had agreed to release him on an unsecured bond meaning he would have gotten out that day. If he hadn't thrown his temper tantrum. Instead he waited another 6 weeks in jail just to have another female attorney represent. I've seen a parent use non-existent discipline as a tool to win over their teenage child. So that the child will choose to live with said rubbish parent. And rubbish parent will receive child support from the other parent. It boils my blood seeing someone allowing their 15 year old child to drop out of school. Get high every day. Buy them drugs. Alcohol. Just about every negative thing you can do to a kid. Just so they don't have to pay $100 in child support a month. Edit. For everyone commenting on the fact that the child support payments were so cheap. Child support amounts in my jurisdiction are relative based upon the paying parenting's situation. Income. Schooling. Assets. Etc. They were deadbeats. Part time under the table seasonal employment in government welfare. Another unfortunate part of the whole ordeal was the party that was losing their child were stand up people who worked. Meaning that, since they were deadbeats and reported their income, the child support payments they had to make to the deadbeat was in the realm of $1000. Edit 2. This case was years and years ago. The figures I'm giving are just ballpark numbers. But I'm not going to look through my storage locker to see if the deadbeat had to pay $148 and not $100. Not my case but still my favorite story. Dude screwed himself over when he went to jury trial for a burglary charge and wore the same. Distinct sweatshirt he wore the night he committed the crime. Kind of hard to argue the guy in the video isn't your client at that point. Needless to say he was convicted and spent a few years in dock. Nasty custody fight. The ex-wife was a lawyer and represented herself. The ex-husband had a pretty shitty lawyer. She kept hauling things back to court trying to get more benefits from him and his lawyer just let it keep happening and it was destroying his life. Allegations of child abuse. Was taking so much money that he could barely afford a shit apartment and couldn't afford a car which both figured in later for custody. Finally the ex-wife's father, also a lawyer, asked to meet with the judge and mentioned a few things that he knew were going on. One of the children was manic depressive and the ex-wife would take him off his meds before it was the ex-husband's turn for custody. The child abuse allegations were from the ex-husband trying to restrain the child during a manic episode because he wasn't medicated. The ex-wife had intentionally timed the child abuse allegation to fall just before the holidays so the ex-husband couldn't see the kids for Halloween. Thanksgiving. Christmas. She bragged to family that it would do the maximum emotional damage possible doing it then. The ex-wife had forged documents to overstate the ex-husband's income when alimony was being determined. Oh. And the ex-wife was sleeping with the ex-husband's lawyer. Edit. Forgot to give the outcome. The ex-husband's lawyer was reported to the bar. Not sure what happened there. The judge order a review of everything and arranged for a new lawyer for the ex-husband. It was looking like the alimony would be vastly reduced and the ex-husband was going to get custody. But then the ex-husband died. Blood clot. Two months later. Years of being screwed over. Finally saw a light at the end of the tunnel. But ended up being the wrong light at the end of the wrong tunnel. Prosecutor here. I showed up for a bond hearing one morning and the defendant asked the judge if he could say something. The first words out of his mouth were, Hey oh judge, look, like, the reason I hit her was because she disrespect me. He did not prevail. Not the worst, but one that sticks out that they did to themselves. Woman shows up to court in a Ritz party time beaches. Drink up. T-shirt. She was there for her first appearance on a third DUI charge. Judge was not in a humorous mood that day. Ro, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. 
Smash like and subscribe for more curated content. Might. It's free and that's a great price.